So now I want to talk about how we can be able to, you know, implement Redis in our Node server, right? So in th in this case, you can see inside of our index.js file. Uh, first, you can see we have a couple uh, imports, right? We have a couple of libraries that we import. And in this case, we have Redis, fetch, right, or no fetch, uh, and we also import it express. Um, here you can see our server listens on port 5000 and then we also have a route called repos slash and then here you can see the username is basically the param um, basically inside of this you know this route right you have we have a ca um, cache middleware so this middleware right takes you know this function takes a couple of parameters right so you can see request the response and the nest right so just like how how middleware works we basically first check to see um, you know, inside of this middleware, we basically first get the param, right, which is the username. And then what we're going to do is that based on this username, right, we're going to check to see if we have it in our cache or not, right? If there's an error, we throw the error. Um, if it doesn't, right, then what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if it, if it, uh, if we have this data inside our cache, right? If this data, if, or I should say, if this username is already being cached in our data, or in our in our cache, right? If it's already being cached, then we can retrieve that cache value and return it, right? So we're gonna say res result dot send. We're gonna re re return the cache value. Otherwise, we're gonna continue, which continues to the next one, which is get repos. And inside of this get repo, right? We basically try to request data from GitHub and then save it in our cache. So you can see here inside of our async function, we basically takes the parameter. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the params, request param, which is the param, uh, username. And then we basically fetch the data, right, from GitHub. Once we fetch the data, we're going to take the public repos, right, to, you know, to basically see how many repos this, this person has. And then we're going to cache this data to Redis. Okay, so this is the username and this is the public repos, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to send the result out. So result.send, right, we basically uh, you know, takes this username and takes this public repos, right? You can see this function, what it does is it just returns a string, which is uh, this username has, you know, this numbers of repos, right? If there is an error when we fetching data, right, it will throw a 404, or in this case, it should throw a 500 error, right? Um, so let's change that, 500, right? So it will throw an error pretty much, okay? So what we're gonna do is we basically have our server, Right now you can see the server is running on port 5000 and we also have our redis so basically you also have to start your redis server as well so you just type in redis server and then just enter and then it will basically start our redis server okay so once we have those two started uh if we were to go to our postman you can see if i were to you know run a request right so you can see this is the repos and this is the username if i send the request uh let's Let's basically check to see what we have in our Redis so far. So we have keys, right? Okay, so you can see we have two data being cached, Andrew and those two, right? Uh, those one right here. So if I were to clear, you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what we have cached. So let's check on, you know, let's check on what are some of the, you know, people that use GitHub. So let's see. So we know that this one is not being cached. So let's try that, right? So what we can see is that the first time when we fetch the data, it takes you know 850 milliseconds or so, right? And if we and it, and in this case, if we were to check on our per terminal, right, keys again, you can see this one. This data is already being cached. So what's going to happen is that if we were to send a request again, you can see that this data is already being cached. So the time is a lot faster, right? So now what we can do is if the data right is being is being returned in this middleware. So let's try to do a console.log. Right. This data is already cached. Okay. It's already cached. So what we can do is that if we send a re this request again, okay. And if we come back and check our server, you can see that this message is locked. So this data is already cached, okay? So let's try, maybe like, let's try another one, okay? Um, so let's try with this person right here because we know that inside of our terminal, right? You can see we only have those three people, where those three username being cached. So now if I want to 
um, try with a different person. Okay. So you can see the first time is 327, right? And then if we were to look at our server, you can see there's nothing being cached. Or maybe let's do this. So console.log this data is not cached. Okay. So what we can do is if I were to say flush all, this will delete all the all the um, data that we have in our Redis. And then if I were to you know come here and then send another request, you can see the, it's, uh, the time it takes is 300, right? 300 millisecond. If we were to come to the server, you can see the data is not cached, which basically means that it hits here, right? And it passed to this function right here. Um, and then if we were to, like, let's say if we were to run this again, you can see the data is a lot faster. It's six milliseconds. We only retrieve data from our cache pretty much. Right. So basically, you can see this is how we um, retrieve data um, or save data and retrieve data in our cache right, to be able to improve the, you know, the, the request speed right, or the time it takes to deliver this data to the client. Now, just like the previous video, I talked about how we can be able to use um, Redis command line with all those commands. Um, here, you can also see that we can also do a couple of things with the client right, or the Redis client. Um, so you can see here we can also do a thing called set with a expire time, right? So what, what this function does um, is it takes the key and it also takes the number of seconds where this key value pair will, will expire, right? So let's say if I want this key value pair to expire in 10 seconds, or let's say give us give us give ourselves a little bit of flexibility. Let's say 20 seconds. Um, so if in this case we have our server restarted, um, what's going to happen is that this key value pair will only live for 20 seconds, right? So now if I want to make this request, uh, let's try to flush all first, right? So in this case, if we were to check our keys, you can see we have nothing. Okay, so now if we were to make a request and then come to our commit line, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say TTL, right? For a particular key, in this case, let's go to check for this one right here. So if I want to check, you can see that this uh, key has only, you know, time to, time to live, or in this case has an expired time, five seconds from now, right? Because it, it basically 20 seconds from the time when the key, key value pair created in our cache. So you can see we still have like five seconds left. Um, but if I were to you know, do this again, you can see this key value pair is gone, right? If I were to, you know, um, you know uh, for checking all the keys, you can see there's no key for this one right here, 